Hey guys, Dr. J here. In the previous episode, we completed World 2-2, defeated the Flame Lurker and met Patches. From now on, we'll be able to visit him in the Nexus and he will offer us some relatively useful items. Today we'll try to complete World 2. The final level in each world is just a boss fight with minimum exploration. We'll need to do a couple more things besides fighting the boss in 2-3, but it's still going to be a rather short episode. Let's start off by removing the scimitar and equipping the dragon longsword. I accidentally stored it with Thomas last episode, so let's go get it. Hello again. I'm keeping a close. We can now store the scimitar since we no longer need it. You have a heart of gold. Okay, now let's go ahead and equip the dragon longsword. I think now would be a good time to show you how to dupe items. I'll use the colorless demon soul for this demonstration. It's very easy to do it. We'll first need to equip the Nexio binding. You could also do it with the shard of Arkstone or the evacuation miracle, but you don't need to. Next, we need to try buying a stackable item from Blacksmith Baldwin. Any item would work. When the prompt that asks you how many of that item you want to purchase appears, don't close it, just start moving away from Baldwin. If he starts talking to you, that means you've succeeded in setting up the dupe. After that, we just need to use the next show binding and then press start when the prompt appears. The last part of the dupe is to go talk with Stockpile Thomas and attempt to store the item you want duped. If you've done everything right, you start casting the next show binding spell, so quickly start spamming the circle button to cancel the cast. When we go check how many colorless demon souls we have stored with Thomas, we'll see that there are 1023 of them. And we still have the one we were carrying, so that means we now have 1024 colorless demon souls. This can be done with every stackable item in the game. Now let's remove the next show binding from the quick use slot and replace it with a healing item, just so I don't accidentally use it. The reason I wanted to show you how to dupe items is because we can now start creating boss weapons. To do that, we need to visit Blacksmith Ed and give him the Red Hot Demon Soul. I'm actually going to also upgrade my Chris Blade, only to plus one. I want this walkthrough to be useful to people who don't want to dupe as well. So the only reason I'll be duping items is to skip most of the grinding. Because if you don't do that, there will be a lot of grinding. We'll still have to grind for a while unless we're super lucky, but it's nothing compared to what we'd have to do if we couldn't dupe. Okay, now let's talk with Ed a couple of times, then exit his menu and talk to him again. That should prompt him into asking for the Red Hot Demon Soul. There's no reason to refuse him, so let's just give it to him and then ask him to upgrade our Chris Blade. The demons are powerful spirits. Some can even bless weapons. But doing so requires a powerful flame. The soul of a demon is an inferno of wrath. I told you that I am busy. Each ore has a grade. Mighty weapons can only be blessed by ores of high grade. The highest grade of all is a pure ore that shines in utter brilliance. A spirit force that delights the eyes. <laughs> the highest grade of all is... There. That's the one. A red hot demon soul. Now you can bless your weapon with another demon soul. Hmm. Wise choice. You've done well to put your trust in the great blacksmith head. Bring me a demon soul. I shall use it to bless your weapon. That's it. We can now craft boss weapons and use the colorless demon souls to upgrade certain unique weapons like the Chris Blade. Hmm. I'm not sure why it says we have 1025 colorless oh. demon souls. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's return to the Nexus. There's just one final thing we need to do there before teleporting to 2 3. Oh, and the reason why I wanted to upgrade our Chris Blade is because that would increase its bonus to magic attack to 10%, which is a pretty significant increase. Let's go to Thomas and take out our composite ball. 
we can't use it effectively since we don't have the stats for it, but we're not going to be fighting with it anyway. We just need it because we can aim with it. If we aim with a bow and then switch to the catalyst and don't move the right analog stick, our spells will go where we were aiming. This is rarely useful, but in this particular boss fight it can help us quite a bit. I forgot to take out some arrows as well. We can't aim without having some equipped. Hello again. I'm You have a heart. Okay, we're ready now. If we press R1 or R2, we'll just fire an arrow. If we press L1, however, we'll enter aiming mode. We can then exit it and we'll still be facing the same way. Oh yeah, and we also need to be two-handing the bow for that to work. I don't think I've mentioned this before, but pressing the triangle button will switch from one-handed to two-handed, and vice versa. We're finally ready to fight the final boss in World 2. We should head straight into the temple. It may look familiar to you. It's because we've already been here. Here's the boss fog gate. This is indeed the place of our first death. The moment our soul was trapped into the Nexus. This time we are much stronger and can have our revenge. But first, let's go left and grab this giant sword. We could do this later, but it's faster if we just go ahead and pick it up now. Okay, let's talk about this fight's mechanics now. This is basically a stealth fight. The dragon god cannot move, so as long as he can't see us, he can't do anything. While his eyes glow yellow, he doesn't see us. There are several piles of rubble that we need to clear. The easiest way to do it is to stay in cover behind the column and destroy them with our soul arrow. We could use a melee weapon to do it, but then we'll be out in the open and the Dragon God will be able to see us and potentially attack us. The reason we needed the bow is because the rubble doesn't have a lock on point, so we have to aim manually. Well, it's not like we needed the bow, but it does make aiming so much easier. Okay, let's talk about the lore again. Now, what I'm about to say is my personal speculation, which may or may not be true. I think that in the past, this mine was actually a dragon's nest. There was some kind of war, and all the dragons were killed. I'm assuming the big M had a hand in that, pun intended. Because the dragon god could not be permanently killed, the ancient burrowers created this temple to both worship and seal the remains of this god. But before I continue, let me just use this ballista. Good, the enchanted ballista sealed his left hand. We now need to go across to his right side and operate the other ballista. And yeah, that's the entirety of this fight. So back to talking about the lore. That last thing I said about the tempo is not my speculation, it's confirmed in a couple of places in the game. The ancient burrowers have also created these enchanted ballistas and the dragonborn smasher we picked up when we went through the fog gate. At that time, the only thing that remained from the Dragon God was Bones. But when the colorless fog reached this place, it's likely he was resurrected. And that's pretty much it. We're almost done with this fight. We only have a couple more piles of rubble to clear before reaching the second ballista and basically ending the fight. I'm just waiting for him to move his head before running to the other column. I don't really have to, it takes a while before he attacks us after seeing us, but since I don't remember if his attack will one-shot us, I'd rather not risk it.
I'm running low on mana and I don't want to waste an old spice for this fight, so I'll switch to the Dragon Longsword and clear the next pile of rubble with it. We'll need to equip it anyway, since the last pile of rubble will be too far from us to hit with a spell. Now we just need to keep track of where he's facing and go smack the rubble a couple of times before returning to the safety of the column. Good, now let's wait until his eyes turn back yellow. And we'll repeat this for as many times as it takes. I'm probably being a bit too cautious. I'm sure I could do this part much faster, but I'd have to wait for our mana to regenerate anyway, so... Okay, nice, we're done with this obstacle. Now let's wait until he comes down again and go for the last pile of rubble. This one will be much easier to destroy, so don't worry about not having any cover. There we go, now we just climb up these stairs and use the ballista. Oh yeah, and there's also a crystal lizard here. I'm not going to bother trying to catch it. Let's see if we can still get the crystal lizard. We can't. Okay. The Dragon God is down, but he's not out yet. Let's go pick up an item nearby before going down and finishing him. It's another Master's Ring. There's actually one more item here that I should have picked up when we were near the first Ballista, but forgot to. Let's go grab it. It's a Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. By the way, feel free to skip all the items here. Besides the Dragon Bone Smasher, of course. None of them are required to unlock all trophies, so you don't have to worry about missing anything. Now that we're here, we can lock on to the horn on his chin and start casting our Soul Arrow. Each two casts, he'll howl in pain, so don't waste your mana while he's doing that. By the way, his breathing will hurt you, so it's best if you don't stand in front of him at any point. The Dragon God is dead, and we've had our revenge. Let's pick up one last item, and we can then return to the Nexus. This is the first time we've seen this message. When we obtain an Arc Demon Soul, that's what the final bosses in each world are called, we'll see this message. This means we can enter World 1-3. Previously, the fog gate after the Tower Knight wouldn't let us through. We won't be entering World 1-3 anytime soon, but we could if we wanted to. Let's level up our magic a bit more, and then we'll store our unneeded items as per usual. By the way, don't feel obligated to only level up magic. If you find yourself dying, you may want to invest some souls in vitality and or endurance. Thing is, at every level up, we also gain physical resistance. So, by merely increasing our level, we do get harder to kill. And usually, it's much safer to kill the enemies as fast as possible than to rely on surviving their attacks. Now let's return to World 2-2 and explore the right path at the beginning that we skipped last time. We should kill these two miners again, and might as well hunt the Crystal Lizard. The trapped mining cart is still going to roll down the tracks, so let's immediately go right. 
There are a lot of scale miners in this tunnel and most of them are hostile. So let's take our time and kill them all. There is a scale miner with a back in the back, so we'll get some upgrade materials as well. There's only a few more left. Okay, we're done with clearing the tunnel. Now, in front of us, there is a very deep shaft. It doesn't look like we can safely descend it, but we can. First, we need to break these minecarts over here. We can now see that there are several platforms we can use to break our fall. Don't try to dodge roll to reduce the fall damage. There is a very good chance you'll fall down if you do so. So far, so good. We now need to drop down from here. Great. We can collect the Ring of Disease Resistance here. I doubt we'll be using it, but we need it for the trophy anyway. And now comes the hard part. We need to drop on top of this wooden beam here. The trick is to aim slightly to the right of it. Otherwise, you just slide off of it. We can now collect an itemized soul from this body, but the more important thing is that we can enter the cave over there. There are a couple of crystal lizards in the cave we can try to kill, as well as an NPC. Nice, we managed to stop the second one from teleporting. Okay, we killed both of them and should now equip the Dragon Bone Smasher. This is the reason why we waited until after we killed the Dragon God to come here. This NPC is called Scurver the Wanderer. Oh, oh, you nearly frightened me to death, creeping up on me like that. <laughs> My name is Scurver. I s s seek treasures of the unknown. I'm impressed you've come this far. Were you guided by a sixth sense or... A brash imprudence. Either way, you've more skill than I. Let us put that s skill to work. There is a t temple beyond here, below the ground. It is a work of art, molded by the ancient burrowers to appease the bones of, of dragons. As a precaution, a broad sword which can cr crush bone and slay dragon is stored in the temple. Truth told, it is the laughing stock of many a swordsmith. They say it's as blunt as a bludgeon. A dull blade meant to slay a dragon. C curious, is it not? I would search for it myself, but I I'm afraid I'd fare poorly against the demons. If you happen to come upon the sword, please let me have a look at it. This place is magnificent, eh? The bones of dragons exuding awe. A dream come true. We will need to talk to him again. Wonderful. The arts of swordsmanship applied in a perfectly useless manner. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Oh, do not mind me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Please take this as a small show of thanks. Take care of that sword, will you? She's a beauty. This is the only guaranteed way to get a pure greystone. There is a very small chance the rockworms will drop one, but we'd have to grind them for quite a while. We got what we came here for, so we can now continue dropping down the shaft. We'll have to come back here one more time, but it will be far off in the future. Let's heal up before we continue dropping. There is a crystal lizard on the platform below us and we can reach it by going down the ladder. However, since we are ranged, it will be easier to kill it by dropping down on this platform and sniping it from afar. It's barely in range of our lock-on so we can easily kill it with our saw arrow. 
You have got to be kidding me. I forgot that each time we cast the spell, we go backwards a bit. Well, we can't do anything about it. Imagine if the rockworms dropped a pure greystone now. Yeah, figured there's no way that happened. What just died? I actually have no idea. Anyway, let's return to the Arkstone and use it to return to the Nexus. Let's store our items with Thomas. Mostly the Dragon Bone Smasher. We won't need it again and it weighs a ton. But we also collected quite a lot of upgrade materials as well. The Pure Greystone is also quite heavy. Perfect. Let's see if we have anything in need of repair. And excuse me, you're lucky. Yeah, our weapons lost a little bit of durability while smashing the robo. You come back alive and eat your business. Finally, let's go check out Patches. We brought him here, so we might as well see what he sells. Well, I remember you. I'm glad I found you. I found some really nice trinkets. Well, we've been long acquainted, so I'm willing to part with them at a special price. But only if you buy today. Sounds suspicious to me. Actually, except for the fresh spice, the restoratives are quite a bit cheaper than at most vendors. And he's the only vendor selling shards of arcstone, heavy arrows and heavy boats. The price of the fragrant ring is ridiculous though. But then again, it is a very useful item. I think this is a good place to end the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot and encourage me to bring more content for you guys. I'm releasing new videos daily, so hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow, when we'll continue our journey through the world of Demon Souls.